Hello everyone, I'm TG and welcome back to Super Earth, your home for democracy. Today I'm talking about Helldivers 2 and not only do I want to give you guys a few more tips that the game doesn't really tell you, but I also want to highlight some things that you are going to need to know and do to excel, especially on your journey into the higher difficulties. So strap in, strap on, and spread some goddamn patriotism. So much like the last video, let's start off with a few things that the game doesn't tell you that you need to know before we move on to the more advanced tips. So number one, when you're using stratagems, a lot of the times you're going to want to make sure you're using them on the go. That way you're not a stationary target. Now this seems like a no brainer, but I've been told a lot of players on PC didn't know this. So if you actually rebind your inputs to the arrow keys, you can then move and input. And it's super useful, especially for a reinforce whenever things get heavy. Next is something that will hopefully get better later on, but if you're still having trouble with matchmaking, there's a handy thing you can do where you start a mission on your own, drop your SOS beacon, and then return to your ship alone. When you do that, your queue will instantly fill up and you won't have any problems finding somebody for your match. Moving on is something that the game does show you, but a lot of people might miss it if they're not paying attention. At the end of a match, you'll see all your points being tabulated and your experience, but you'll notice that things are weighted very, very differently. At the top you have your main mission, then submission, then the bases, and then how many of your hell divers extract. So keep that in mind whenever you are playing the game because sometimes it's just not worth it to try to summon another hell diver just before you leave the match because you're really not going to get much out of it anyway. Alternatively, it's sometimes just simply not worth it to destroy some of the bases or do a few submissions depending on how much time it's taking and how much it is hurting your reinforcements. Next is one I just found out, and it seems like it's a little bit of a bug, but anytime you see a submission to refill the artillery, if you pick up an artillery shell, you'll notice how slow you move. But if you spam the pickup button over and over again, you'll actually move quite a bit faster because your Helldiver will throw it forward a little bit and then pick it back up in midair. And it's a great way to save some time, especially if you know, you're surrounded by the automatons or the bugs. Next, I want to mention something about taking out enemy bases. So we know you throw a grenade into a bug hole or into a fabricator exhaust and it's going to destroy the base. But with the fabricators especially, it sometimes just seems like your grenades will not go into the exhaust. God knows I have wasted so many grenades. But did you know for fabricators, you can actually toss a grenade right into the open door? So much easier, so much simpler. And let's be honest, hell divers, they are not paying us to think. Next is a tip that only gets more important the higher difficulty that you go. You can actually shoot down automaton dropships. Now this might not seem like much whenever you're playing the first three or four difficulty levels, but later on, when they start dropping tanks on you, it's really important to know that using any kind of explosive, like a rocket launcher, etc., can actually take them out before they drop anything and save you a world of trouble. Another thing that you might have actually noticed by accident is that you can get stratagems attached to enemies. Now that can be useful, but it can also be pretty dangerous. And there's not really a reliable way to replicate it, but it's something to just keep in mind. And another thing about stratagems is if you're holding one and you get killed, it'll drop that stratagem right on your dead body. So again, that could be good, but it could also spell disaster for your team. Moving on is another thing that a lot of people don't seem to know about, but you can actually shoot out lights to reduce enemy visibility for those night missions. It might not always seem like a big deal, but sometimes you just want to be left alone. And finally, I just want to stress the importance of crouching or going prone to reduce your recoil and make you a smaller target for enemies. It seems basic, but I still see so many players not utilizing this whenever they can, and it makes a world of difference, especially when it comes to your recoil. So unless you're on the move, I say crouch, 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 or go prone whenever you can. All right, hell divers, that does it for basic training. Let's move on to the advanced stuff. You're up to the extreme difficulty, you're working your way to Helldiver, and quite frankly, you're still flying by the seat of your pants, because things are getting insane. So here's a few things you need to know to fully understand your place in the team. There's nothing worse than seeing that one guy who's up to like level 20 already, and still he doesn't know what's going on. Now, you don't want to waste your team's reinforcement budget, do you? That would be unpatriotic. So tune in. So number one with a bullet is make sure you call down any support weapons or armor or any SOS beacon you need if you're missing a teammate as soon as possible. 
And by that, I mean as soon as the mission begins. The enemy's not going to wait, so why would you? Things are just going to get hairier and hairier the higher difficulties that you go up and the longer the match goes on. So make sure you are prepared as much as possible. Number two, if you're still getting used to the game and you don't know what to purchase yet because there's all kinds of stuff coming at you at once, make sure you unlock at least a few Eagle airstrikes ASAP. On your way up the difficulties, these are going to be invaluable, more so than the orbital strikes in my opinion. That's not to say the orbitals aren't important, you really have to learn which stratagems are good for which situation. Learn which stratagems can destroy buildings, because some can't, and some objectives require you to destroy buildings. So honestly, don't be afraid to test things out solo, because it will pay off dividends later on. Now, number three I mentioned in my previous video, but I cannot understate the importance. Always look for the high ground. The high ground is king in this game, especially whenever it comes to the bugs. I can't count the amount of times where, honestly, I feel like I saved the day, because either I landed on top of a cliff, or I parkoured my way up there, and I could just rain destruction down every which way. In fact, depending on what type of enemy you're fighting, some of them literally can't touch you if you're up high enough. Number four, let's talk about submissions. As I said before, sometimes it's not worth going after every single submission if the risk reward is too high. But two that you almost always want to go after are the communication tower and artillery. Completing the communication tower submission actually shows all the point of interests on the map afterwards. So that's crazy because that way you don't have to go running around hoping to find something. You can actually plan and strategize and go after the points that are closest to objectives, etc, etc, and really coordinate with your team, and it just makes everything so much easier. The artillery submission is slightly less important, but it's still pretty awesome once you get it done, because that will unlock five stratagems for artillery barrages against your enemies. Can't complain about that. And the last submission I highly suggest you do not skip is anytime you're fighting the bugs and there's a spore tower. This thing will make your life hell, because you won't be able to see anything until you take it out. Thankfully, it's quite easy to take out, and that's why I say definitely don't skip it. You can snipe this thing from like halfway across the map and take it out relatively quickly without being in any danger at all. Number five, I want to talk about points of interest on the map. Some of them are just like not even worth investigating. However, some of them you absolutely do not want to skip. So we all know most points of interest generally have either a weapon or some ammo, a couple samples around them. You know, it's usually worth the stop, but if you ever see a flashing yellow beacon, absolutely never skip this one. It's going to be a crash shuttle, and once you open it up, you're going to get crazy good rewards. I'm talking war bonds, even super credits sometime, so it's always worth the stop. And the absolute best point of interest you can find is a gigantic door with two buttons. Now this does of course require two players, so if you're playing solo, you're out of luck. But if you can get one of your teammates to open this door with you, you're going to get full ammo, full grenades, full stims, and really good rewards that you would get from that beacon I was talking about, but more. So sometimes you get three stacks of war bonds, three stacks of super credits, it's actually just crazy. In fact, I'd say opening these doors is actually worth a few deaths if it's super heavily guarded. Number six is inarguably the most important thing whenever you want to complete a successful mission. Reinforcements. The number one thing that drives me crazy that I see players still doing is not reinforcing their team Whenever they have downtime, if they're completely safe or they're running away, they just don't reinforce. And I don't know if it's because they don't see it or what, but as soon as you see a teammate die, 9 times out of 10, you should probably just reinforce right away. However, you do need to be strategic where you place it. For example, if you're fighting against the automatons and you're having just so much trouble with a big heavily fortified base, sometimes it's best to throw that reinforcement into the base because that way your teammates can actually land on fabricators and stop them from spawning enemies, as well as getting an inroad to clear the way for you guys. So there is a right way and a wrong way to reinforce, just make sure you're thinking about it, and the most important thing is, do reinforce. So number seven, speaking of reinforcements, let's talk about enemy reinforcements. Did you know you can actually interrupt enemies from reinforcing their team? You can see a bot getting a flare ready, ready to shoot it up and call down a drop, and you can see a bug starting their little howl getting ready to cause a breach. And believe me, I know it's not always easy, especially when things get so hectic, but if you ever see enemies beginning this animation, make sure you target them ASAP. You don't get a big window to do it, but if you do, you will save your team so much headache. Now for number eight, I want to talk about just a few enemy types that are like absolutely highest 
possible priority, you have to kill them before you go any further. When dealing with the bugs, you need to kill stalkers or they will wipe your team. And if you don't know what a stalker is, it's the big version of those white little clawed bastards that just constantly jump at you and they do so much damage, they will absolutely wipe your team and they'll keep spawning until you take out their lair. Oh, and they're invisible too. As if those big boys weren't bad enough, the small version is almost just as deadly. So make sure you're targeting these guys first as well. Now, when it comes to the automatons, pretty much all of them are pretty dangerous, but a few that you totally want to go after are the big old heavy tanks and the gigantic marauders that just take absolutely no damage from the front, shoot fire at you, chainsaws, everything. You need to take those guys out as soon as you can. The best way to do this, if you're not dealing with orbital strikes, is you need to go around back and you'll see a little orange vent on their back. That's where they're going to take damage. A lot of the times, a lot of damage. So with something like an impact grenade, for example, using two or three of those will completely destroy the tank. I often find it really useful to act as kind of like a decoy for my team and have the tank or the marauder targeting me as I kite them around because that turns them and the rest of my team can have free reign at their backside. Number nine, let's talk alt fires. Again, I mentioned this a little bit in my previous video, but I can't understate the absolute importance of alt fires. One shining example is the railgun. Basically, the railgun is kind of junk. It's something that I always saw left there. I never used until I found out you can hold the square button and change its alt fire to make it unsafe. Now, what this means is it charges up for a short amount of time, charges up higher, does way more damage. However, if you don't fire it in time, it'll explode and kill you. So it's a risk reward kind of thing. However, it's totally worth it. It turns the railgun into like complete meta because you can pretty much one shot most bugs on the higher difficulties, except for the heavily armored types like the chargers or the big boys. But everything else doesn't stand a chance. And it's not just the railgun. I really encourage you guys to jump in and do a little bit of experimentation because so many weapons have either an auto mode, a semi auto mode, etc. A lot of the fully automatic weapons can be changed to semi-automatic and it really does depend on both your playstyle and what you're fighting against and it can make a world of difference. It can make a junk weapon the shiny example of like what you need against a certain enemy type. And one more important thing to mention about this is a lot of the times the superior alt fire is not the default. So really make sure you are checking every weapon out because there's so many different variations. Next, number 10 can sometimes be seen as unethical, but if you're in a firefight, a lot of the time it's a good idea whenever your allies die to loot their body, pick up their sub weapon, pick up their armor, etc. That actually makes it so the entire team doesn't have to bring a certain weapon or a certain piece of equipment and more than one player can have it. So of course it's best to communicate with your team if you're going to do this because a lot of the times People really rely on their sub weapons after they die to go back and pick them up, you know what I mean? But it can be a super good way to completely deck out your team for a hard fight. And finally, lucky number 11 is something that the game does a really, really poor job of explaining to you. Different armor types for different enemies. Now you'll get some basic information if you look at your weapon screen. It'll tell you that a weapon has light armor piercing or medium armor piercing, if it's incendiary, etc. However. There's no real way to know which enemy types have which armor types. During your hell dives, you might notice that whenever you're firing on an enemy, you see like a little ricochet icon. That means that the weapon that you're currently using does not penetrate that enemy's armor. This is something that can just come from experience and experimentation, especially when we start seeing new content, new weapons in the future. As the game really hasn't even been out a week yet, Typically, what I like to use currently is the incendiary shotgun on the paid warbond. And the reason I do is because it pierces light armor, it does a lot of damage really quickly, and it reloads in a clip as opposed to single cartridges like the other shotguns. But on top of that, the incendiary actually goes through armor. It's not going to be a huge amount, but you'll notice whenever you're firing this thing off, you can actually kill enemies even though you're getting that little ricochet icon because the burn does damage. In fact, I might even put together some silly little flame build or something to show you guys because fire can be quite deadly. So there you have it, disposable boys and disposable girls. I hope this helps you guys out and makes you a better hell diver. And you know what? I know it will. Because you're goddamn patriots.
As always, I'm TG. If you like what you saw, you know what to do.